Hello everybody, this is my first video of 2024. I wish you all a new year, and to kick off this new year, I'd love all of us to have the best possible creative momentum uh, moving forward. Now, as an educator, I have the pleasure and privilege of seeing hundreds and hundreds of students every year, and I wanna specifically look at in this video the, the commonalities and the similar traits of the successful students from the ones that are least successful. As many of you are aware, in a lot of online classes and whether you're training on your own, a lot of people don't follow through with things. They drop out, they only attend half the classes. When they can attend a class, half the time, most of the assignments aren't even fully complete. But what I do get and what I do see is plenty of excuses. So hopefully in this video, we're gonna go over some strategies to keep you focused and of course to keep you on target for your own creative goals. I'm Tyler Redlin. If you're new here, I've been a concept artist, illustrator, and instructor now for about 12 years, and I'm here to help you. So let's go. Yeah, the truth is that like 90% of the journey itself can be very tumultuous, ugly, and unforgiving, you know, for an artist or creator. And honestly, the most common aspects that I see for the most successful artists is their work ethic, their discipline, and their curiosity. It actually has nothing to do with their relative skill level or how popular they are. And of course I feel enjoying this process is such an important part of that overall journey because it's all going to come back to this process. Just the enjoying the act of improving and improving at a pace that's comfortable for you. Because if, if you just simply throw everything at it at 100%, you will burn out, you, you will get too tired. Um, so it's about sustainability. And for me, what I had to do and what I recommend to many of, of my students, whether they're in classes, whether they're in the group meetups on Patreon, is to identify what's holding us back to begin with, like looking at the core and, and typical reasons that we don't start or we don't finish or follow through with something. We're, we're all human at the end of the day and we do share a very common uh, aspect that we are in fact amazing at making excuses up for ourselves. It can be really terrible sometimes. So we want to find what are our most common like we all have different sets of excuses that we go to because we're all in different seasons of life right we all have different health we all have different circumstances we're all different ages so there's different stakes at play with this but i do recommend for every anyone watching to of course find what is the most things and for me i'm gonna i'm gonna narrow this down to the most common i see out of all of my students so i can break them down and give you guys some strategies on what to improve or what to watch out for. Because right, if you can avoid it, then that's that's a, a battle won because you've never had to fight it. So let's look at distractions, right? Like distractions is a huge part on why we potentially don't finish something. You know, and this could be a number of things. It could be our family, right? Like I have two kids and they're very demanding. And I, with the way my work goes and the way the flexibility of the schedule is, I, I have to watch them you know, a lot of the week. And it's very hard even to find time like this to record this without those distractions, without the noise, you know, right above there. And so like, sometimes that's my excuse when I'm like, oh, I can't do a video this week. I just didn't get the time. Well, I could make the time, you know, I, I and I'm trying to get better. That's part of my new year, <laughs> you know, goal here is to, to do more frequent videos, more consistency. And I have to stop making excuses that my kids are too loud or I have to watch them. Right, but like distractions, that's that's something we all deal with. Um, some again, it can be a family member. What? How can we talk to our, our spouse, or a significant other, or you know, even managing kids? You know, it's like okay, maybe I can have my mother-in-law come over and watch them one afternoon a week, and that's going to be my recording time. Uh, you know, whatever you have to do, but like analyze, like do you blame the fact that you're not getting something done or starting done on? somebody else this is a very external force that we may not have the most control of but we can certainly you know try to improve 
our you know our immediate environment our scenario our our work ethic in regards to our relationship with our, our people you know even if it's our parents if you're younger and you're and you're living at home and you know maybe you don't have your own space to work in maybe that's a great way to start is like again if you can work on an iPad or something more portable you know just disappear in a corner of the house or even leave the house and do some drawing or painting you know if, if, the, if your home life is not leading you to be productive or healthy if there's a part of your environment at home whether it's clutter whether it's too small whether it's half broken equipment just take care of it so it doesn't become an excuse to not finish something anymore especially too if you're looking at stuff all around your your desk or if you've got like multiple browsers or displays and you've got like you know YouTube's on Netflix podcasts if these are distracting you like they they have to go you want to get into that that area that 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 flow state you know in your own headspace so that you forget what time it is and you're just like you know in two hours fly by without you even thinking about the concept of time and that's a very productive you know session you just had when that happens and this leads to just having like those bad habits overall like what bad habits do you have in in a workspace is it is it bringing your phone into your your zone you know where you have to work i leave mine you know upstairs when i come down to work or do things like this or run a class even i've even stopped wearing like my apple watch because that was relaying messages it was going off it was it's constantly distracting me when i work so i don't even you know wear my watch anymore and that was the thing i it was just it's it's good for other habits like fitness and and health but it for working i don't need my watch to work so like whatever you don't need strip away and this is going to be a very kind of common theme i think throughout a lot of these strategies and that's just simply removing the non-essential or what is counter productive and if you have to sit down literally one afternoon and just like get a notebook or a piece of paper sit in your your creative space list out what your excuses are in your immediate environment and what bad habits come from them like do you have like a pantry right over there you're constantly just getting up to get snacks you're you're not only filling yourself with bad food but you're just getting up and breaking your flow state you know because of the snacks in the area or do you are you a gamer do you game on your your computer your workstation you know maybe you need to uninstall steam or, or do something to like help that productivity or maybe it's discord discord can be a great tool and asset it right there's a great sense of community you can have as even as like an isolated creative but like if you're just getting like bah, 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 you know if you're getting like notifications left and right and they're distracting you then perhaps it's you know the the bad outweighs the good and or maybe you just need to shut it off and then open it from let's say like 4 to 5 p.m or you know before bed you open up the, the app you can always close the app or mute it so you could do that as well you don't have to go to the extreme of course so right distractions bad habits environments that's all the big first here the second one is our feeling of uh, inadequateness right like i know i personally even even today still feel like I'm inadequate for many things. Like I, it can be like, if, if it's about my art, which happens about my art, like cause again, I'm on Instagram. I, I watch fellow YouTubers. I, I go on art station. I see constantly how people are, are pumping out amazing works. And that still doesn't ever stop me from feeling, you know, like I have to do better or like, that these guys are up on a higher pedestal for me and I don't deserve even what uh, I have accomplished. You know, it's imposter syndrome when it comes to the art and creative stuff. Like I feel like I am never gonna get ahead, especially with this field where let's say like the entry level jobs are kind of getting, especially with like this year, right? They're, they're kind of smaller and smaller. And if, and the way technology is advancing so fast, I know I personally feel like unless I am constantly learning something new and trying to explore potential possibilities with it, like you, I just feel like I get left behind. And, and many of you are probably like that uh, as well. But if you are a student and you're working on particular phases of your career, just, just either, okay, I'm going to work on fundamentals or I'm going to work on making my starter portfolio or I'm going to do 
you know, just different. Like, if, let's say if you have this starter portfolio working on getting your ex artistic expression into it, where you put your passion projects in, right? There's different seasons of life for your art career. This celebrate the small wins. And I, I, I had a, you know, a young girl just comment on a, on a video just yesterday, even that like, you know, she, she was young and she's like comparing herself to, to not only her fellow students, but to, again, to people online, people that are younger than her that are seemingly better. And don't compare yourself to another person in, in that way. The same way I have to not compare myself to these other individuals online that are either a working as a studio and the studios is producing a ton of work, or maybe the individual is just amazing and they have way more time than me to learn all the new advanced, you know, 3D scanning techniques and the VR technology and they can build scenes in Unreal 5 and yada yada and their blender skills are way better. I feel inadequate about all these things like every day, by the way. And another great way to, to deal with the feeling of inadequacy, adequateness, at least with, with art and one that I've dealt with with myself and my students is embracing imperfection. I have a lot of students in particular that come at me with, they want to make everything perfect. And that's a big reason why people don't come to a class with a completed assignment. They're too in their headspace about making it absolutely perfect. It's always for class. It's do this. I'm in front of all these other people. I've got to do it super well. Yeah, it, yeah, sure. It never hurts to try to do something very well. But we, when you're, if you find yourself in a rhythm in your creative process where you're absolutely you're just repeating the same thing or you're constantly undoing if you're working digitally undo 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 you know and you're just like you can't satisfy yourself treat it like it's an old school oil painting or acrylics or something you, you make a mark just own that mark work through it work it into the image work it into the drawing build up over it work it around uh keep the momentum even if it's not going like super super forward just going like a little bit more forward at a time instead of just constantly back constantly back right we're all guilty of this we've all sat down to work on a particular piece and it's just constantly step one step two step one step right going back and forth it's ridiculous we've, we've all do it i've seen students all the time um i've been there but remember perfectionism is the enemy of good and it will suck the life out of your paintings out of your drawings there's no such thing as perfect right it's an impossible measurement to kind of compare yourself to. So the easier and the faster you can work that out of your system, the more you'll be on your merry way. All right, so number three on my list today would be avoidance, right? If we're not distracted, if we don't get in our own headspace about feeling inadequate, we're constantly avoiding something, right? What, what are we potentially avoiding? Well, it, it could come from our lack of understanding on something. Maybe it's something like a subject matter. Maybe it's something about the process itself. Uh, maybe something is just simply hard to comprehend. So we avoid it, right? And this is really all about getting out of our own comfort zone, right? Because if we just do what we're um, really comfortable with, we never really actually improve and, and reach that next level. And I'm not saying we always have to be uncomfortable, but if you know your, yourself, like you can only tackle doing one subject matter or one type of lighting or one character type or only one sort of environmental scene, if you need difference to shake it up, you know, create a different uh, design problem or a different prompt to start building your art from. But yeah, it's, it's essentially very easy to come up with the excuse of avoiding something just because it is too hard. One of the best things we could possibly do is to take an overwhelming task and simply just chop it up into way more manageable tasks. So like I recommend in, in regards to like budgeting your schedule, like if you want to do a bigger environment piece this particular week, set one day up with a firm deadline on each of these stages, right? Like day one, you're just going to sketch, you know, within a very short amount of time on day two, you're just doing a lot of like the big, simple atmospheric shapes of color, right? Like no detail. You're not worrying about brush strokes, none of those small things. And then like days three and four, it's like, okay, like let's ratchet up the detail a little bit then. And then like, okay, by day five, it's all going to be like, you know, I'm going to touch up the lighting. I'm going to add the special effects. If, if it has special effects, the same with like a character, right? Like 
day one, just come up with like a really fun prompt, do the gesture or do the research. And then day two, do the, you know, block it out, sketch it out in, in like a mannequin like stage. And then, you know, day three, draw all the care, the clothes on the character. If you feel genuinely this overwhelmed with like a task like that, just, you know, basically piecemeal it out to yourself so that you get quite a bit more comfortable during this whole process of, of doing that. Like when I had to design, when I forced myself to design a sci-fi vehicle, because even though I've been working forever, I had never come across a scenario in my job where I had to design a sci-fi vehicle. So I forced myself to go through the process of designing a vehicle. Now I understand how to how the design process works. Okay, I'm gonna research, I'm gonna set a goal, I'm gonna sketch it out with, with lots of thumbnails, I'm gonna do rougher thumbnails, and I'm gonna block it out in 3D, and then I'm gonna get more specific, right? It goes from very broad to specific. And I know the process, so I can apply that process uh, to anything. I, I just was, I'm not comfortable with designing hard surface and, and sci-fi stuff. So I just went through the process to prove to myself I could do it. Now, it, do I do that every day or every month? No, but if I have, had to do that now on a job, I'd be way more comfortable doing it because I forced myself to do it that one time. So just think of them as small micro challenges you can present to yourself and simply tackle them. If you have to find a mentor or a discord group, again, to help you with coming up with prompts and, and help force you to, to think a little differently or approach a problem differently, um, seek a community or an awesome you know Patreon like mine if, if you need that help. Like I, I usually start off the students that can't draw environments at all like, do let's just spend a day drawing rocks. We just, you know, grind out rock shapes. Then we're gonna combine the rock shapes and then we're gonna add shadows to the rock, right? It's literally little baby steps. That's all we have to do, right? It's slightly better than the day before. I think the next thing that naturally stems from this, for, so like number four, would be our process. Most students that I see that don't finish something or don't follow through with something is they are making something far more difficult than they should or that they need to. And I say like, if you're starting out, like you know, again, you're starting a new, new project on the new year, if you just wanna build something new and fresh, give yourself an easy win. And that's okay, like you don't always have to be making yourself uncomfortable or tackling some big lofty goal. That's exactly what I'm doing with this painting during this video. This is comfort zone stuff for me. Like this is pretty easy. I, I might not grow the most from doing this, but I just came off the holidays. I didn't, I didn't lift my stylus, my brush, my pen. I didn't do a thing for like over two weeks. I was fine with that. I felt a little guilty about it, but I'm gonna get back into the the saddle, you know, of that. I'm gonna just do an easy painting that I can do pretty comfortably. And it's gonna build momentum. And I, you know, throughout the year, I can do a little bit more uh, challenging ones, of course. Next week, I'll be doing something more. So whatever your comfort art is, you know, if, if you need to break a bad rhythm, absolutely jump in and do that. And a huge part of this too, you know, making it easy for yourself is to simplify the process. A lot of students just, simply tend to overcomplicate things you know, way too soon. And it, I'm not purely just talking about doing a picture or a design that is so complicated that, you know, it's like a level five design and they're kind of still level one. Uh, it's not necessarily about that, but it's about finding a process where you can simplify how you're managing your fundamentals. So like if you can't paint well, bolster that with like a really good drawing, spend extra time drawing your idea out and then try to paint it in. Whereas I don't like to draw a lot so much. So I'm going to do a rougher drawing as you, you saw here in this video. And I'm going to figure a lot of that out in the painting, but the certain experience that I had would allow me to do that. So if you can figure out some of these little quirks in your process, ultimately it'll allow you to take whatever shortcuts you need to keep your uh, momentum uh, higher, for example, or if you find that you work really well, you know, from reference photos, get the reference and then if you find like they actually hold you back which I do see a lot because I have a lot of my students work directly from reference photos to see how you know well they can analyze the information and pick up you know the essence of a picture but at some point I'm like it's like with Luke you know like in, in Star Wars like shut off the targeting computer put the reference away feel out the rhythms and the flow of the picture on your from your own intuition from there the reference can get you so far can get you started and it might even help you finish some things, but at some point, you know, I do recommend put the reference away and just try to ride out your own emotional feeling and in intuitiveness that you can place into a particular idea or painting. 
And you could see like early on, even with this painting that I'm doing on screen now is I had it looking and pretty decent uh, from a very early level, right? And that's because like in my process, I'm not stressing about making really fast brush strokes, right? I'm not focusing on speed. I'm certainly not making things on perfect. I'm just actually slowing down to take the time to like make sure every mark I make is intentful, that I have a thought process, but, and I make big, important brush strokes. It's, it, some people call it brush economy, like just your, your pure efficiency with things. Uh, and it's just, you know, give some thought, like just don't try to like grind out a painting and go really, really fast because you think it's gonna speed things up. Speed will come from actually just slowing down, making like three really good brush strokes, then 20 rushed ones that don't solve any problems. So like when I'm managing and trying to develop my own process, I'm trying to make big decisions with simple and very direct you know, marks. And if things aren't working, you know, very, very soon, very early on, you know, with, within 20 minutes, I'm just gonna scrap it and start over. Because like far too many times, you know, do I you know, see my, my own students working, you know, three or four hours into a painting and it's got such fundamental flaws in it or they're detailing it at a, like a very rich, <laughs> intricate level that it's like, no, no, just focus on these big things first. So just understanding process, it can be a huge thing to keep your, your own uh, momentum up. And I get it, we have to almost make a lot of bad paintings to learn a good process. But um, I, when in doubt, if, if things aren't working, you don't have to start a whole painting over. You can work through it, you can try to fix it, but you should be able to tell. If you're following any kind of process, you should be able to tell whether your image is going to work or not very early on. That That's the big takeaway from this bullet point. Like don't spend 30 or minutes or an hour just putting a few marks on a page to kind of feel it out. Like, you know, like you start simple, then go to complex. So time, time is a huge thing that we all deal with in different ways, right? This is uh, number five, the, the biggest of biggest excuses ever in our universe, time. Like these are, again, all of my excuses for time. I could wake up earlier, I could go to bed earlier, I could stay up later, I could play less video games, watch less dramas with my wife at night, whatever it is, right? Like I got excuses too. Um, less time in the gym, I spend probably too much time there. But either way, figure out if that is something you're bullshitting yourself about, like, are you just making an excuse for this? Or like, could you actually sit there and make an actionable change in your schedule to make the time for what's important? I generally just say, take things, of course, in strides. Don't worry so much about that end, end goal. Bring it down to something that you can measure and complete, you know, much more efficiently. Like I can't always just think about even getting one of these videos done. Okay, if I can just get the recording done, you <laughs> know, just this audio we're watching now, that's a huge win and I gotta celebrate that. I can figure out the hours that it takes to edit this and yada yada, upload it and thumbnails. I can figure all that out after. I at least just need to get step one done. Same with like a painting. If I, I just need to block it all out and then I could add, oh, I'll spend as much time as I have left adding all the little details in that most people won't notice anyway. But again, doing things in strides and of course, prioritizing what's important to you. So yes, as it turns out, like when I'm on a holiday or a winter break, like we just did before the new year, my work stuff gets very low on the priority list, which I think is fine, right? For, for a break, we all need one. But like, let's say if I continue like two weeks into January in full like holiday break mode and I'm not really doing stuff and I'm sleeping in, see, I, I'm, I'm experienced enough to know like, that's a problem. I need to make a change. If we're talking about what we can do on like a day to day, I kid you not, I just use a nice little pad of paper and I outline the most important things to do for the day, uh, you know, ahead for the upcoming day. And I make, I literally go through it and try to get them all done as fast or not as fast, but you know, as, as efficiently as I can. I don't have to think about it. It's just an organized list that I've sorted out the night before. And so that way I can just go, go, go. 
uh, the following day. And I make sure I like, okay, this is from this time frame. This is from this time frame. I have to do this by this time, right? I make sure it's all sorted out in that regard. For me personally, just it, it helps anchor literally my priorities in terms of like what is important and what I need to focus on in a minute, right? Like I don't need to be on eBay right now, you know, looking up retro game prices or something like that. My, my mind easily can carry a train of thought in, into like getting distracted with stuff like that. So I, again, focus on the task at hand. But yeah, this, just to add this onto this little segment while it's on the tip of my mind, it's just like or, organizing things in general is a great way to avoid a lot of those smaller excuses. Um, whether it's your desk, whether it's your food, whether it's a part of your schedule. Yes, it takes actual effort to, to organize yourself and to keep yourself in order, but that's what this is all about, right? If, if we all just became better from watching a video like this, or we just got rich from reading a money book, everybody would be millionaires. Everybody would be successful. No, right? It, it takes action. It's not just learning. It's just not liking the idea of it. It's actually doing. And that's where a lot of the learning is, you know, just like just doing anything. Try something in your schedule. If it doesn't work, change it. If you're trying a new painting process, if it doesn't work, note what's not working, right? And then change it. All right. So because this video is going on, I go, I go one more uh, for you guys today. It's something I talk about fairly regularly on the channel because it is very overlooked and very important. And that's, of course, our health. Happiness, of course, is part of that, right? We do want to be both physically healthy and, right, the other side of that coin is the mental side of things. We want to be happy and with what we create. We want to be in a good state of mind, you know, as we're going through this process and journey. Of course, a huge part of that, I feel, is just simply practicing self-compassion. Being able to forgive yourself if you didn't deliver on a certain goal, which is what you know we're talking here about. Like we want to, we want to get better at all of this. We want to not measure ourselves up against immeasurable standards. Again, with perfectionism, that's really unhealthy. And to remember not to chase social media algorithms, that's really toxic and destructive on a lot of creators just trying to chase something again we have really no control of we do have a lot of control over our output and that's one thing I do recommend doing with again just balancing yourself out keeping yourself in a good you know mental state of mind is just to control your output the best possible way that you can if that means just outlining oh I'm gonna deliver one painting a week like if I'm going to say I'm going to do one painting a week, so I have four at the end of the month, or if I'm going to do one project a month, but it's going to be bigger, maybe I'll do five little sections of it throughout the week, whatever it is, you know, like whether you just want to practice anatomy every Monday or perspective on Tuesday or color and light Wednesday and Thursday, because that's really hard, whatever the case is, you're being mindful and you're con you're in a sense controlling your output. You're not like, I'm going to produce something and put it on Instagram every day or spend four hours a day trying to push and shove out a reel because like that might make me a little more popular. Again, you're going to burn yourself out. It's not sustainable. And this is all about doing something for yourself, for your own individualness that you can make sustainable. And I think part of that is to remember to create for yourself. It's not always about the audience or what you think is important. Sometimes we could take that for granted. And I do think there there is merit, of course, and there is value in creating appealing and marketable creations. And those marketable pieces of art that are aesthetically pleasing can lead to popularity, that can lead to jobs, that can, it, it can, right? Like, but that's a train of thought, like we don't want to go down that way, like, because if, if we think in that sort of fashion with every piece that we do and they don't, you know, catch some algorithmic wave that will make it super popular, right? We get depressed. We, we like this acceptance. We like being recognized for our creations. It's a very human thing. It's a very normal thing. But at the, still at the end of the day, we want to enjoy this process and we want to create 
you know, what we're passionate about, what we truly deeply like. So part of keeping yourself uh, mentally in check too is I, I find a good community that you like. There's there's a free one in here with the YouTube. You guys can check it out. I hang out there every Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, if you want to drop by and say hi. And there's lots of other discords. There's lots of other artistic communities on every platform um, that are great to mingle with. And you know, I just you just want to feel them out and make sure like it's a good, healthy place for you. Because sometimes they get so big and anything can go in them and they can be kind of destructive. So if you find kind of tighter ones, where there's a couple of nice groups of people, I think that's a very healthy thing. You can ask questions. There's very, you know, we're all relatable in that sense. We're all creators. We all struggle with certain things. And I think community is a great way to keep us positive. You know, happy thinking keeps us from sinking sort of thing. But, and then there's, I'm not gonna go crazy into this with this video course, but take care of your health, your physical health. I walk many times a week. I, I have to go to the gym like an hour for five days a week, right? Everything is scheduled, right? I'm producing and outlining my outcome. Like, oh, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. So I know what I'm expecting of myself uh, to do. So I can just take care of yourself. You know, if you have to get a standing desk, do that. If you have, Go for walks in the morning, go for walks in the evening. Walking is so good. Just do some walking. I'd recommend to anybody. Um, because like if, if you're if you're physically unable to create and if, if things start failing on you or if you just start deteriorating, you know, in your office, then you're not gonna be able to produce. So you gotta take care of yourself both mentally and of course physically so it does not become an excuse. Only in the scenario where like where you come down, you know, with like a sickness. And I do have to deal with stuff like that a lot right because i work home isolated in this in this bubble my immune system doesn't have to battle that much but my young kids in preschool and elementary school my wife works in an elementary school these three entities that i have to live with they literally bombard me with all the stuff they have to deal with at a school and so like yeah, i get sick i get sick from them sometimes it happens and again that that's just going to be an excuse that day but if, if I'm in fully control of it, and that's what we want to do, we want to be in control, right, of as many of our outcomes and as many of our, our excuses as we can so that, you know, like 10 days in a row, we're like, oh, I'm still sick, I'm still sick. No, you know, I was sick half of December, and I still had to find a way to, to eventually produce, you know, work for the studio. So it happens. <laughs> we all There's, of course, going to be you know, an excuse that we have no control over, that we can't get around. Maybe your car breaks down. Maybe your plane is delayed. Maybe your kids get you sick. Whatever the case is. Like, but those are different from things that we can control. And just be, it, that's what this is about. Just being mindful of these things. How much we're really just bullshitting ourselves to not do something because we're procrastinating. And how much do we really want something? What can we do to get that done? It, it, it is the student that shows up every day that over delivers on assignments and that asks the most questions that do the best every single time without fail. It's not how well they do them. It's not completing anything with a certain level of perfectionism. It's not out, out even doing the other students. It's just simply consistently putting in that time and then being really curious enough to ask as many questions as they can steal from me with, with the time in a, in a class or in a call. Because I think really, at the end of the day, to be successful in a creative field like this, you really have to be willing to keep yourself accountable and to keep growing far beyond any class, far beyond any mentorship, and, and far into any career. Because like, again, we everything's moving so fast. If we just, if, if we stop, we, we don't want to learn something new for a couple months or a couple years maybe, like, I'm going to feel like, worse than I already do about just falling behind and you know we just have to love this craft to keep going and to showing up and to enjoy it yes being demanding on yourself will get you very very far but you also have to just love the craft because that's going to be what's going to keep you going the creative field will forever be competitive but it's not impossible. So if you guys have any questions or things you wanna weigh in, I'd love to hear from you below and I'll catch you guys next video.